Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. This is the Shadowland skinning guide. Skinning has been consistently the best combination of ease and profitability in Shadowlands so far, and represents the best simple option for players trying to earn enough gold to pay for a token, upgrade their gear, or just waste on random crap like I do. Now this is an exploit guide, so I'm not going to cover the basics of skinning in any detail, but I should mention that you will need some way to reduce skinning time. I use Dark Moon Firewater. You'll also need the Faster Loot Add-on. These things aren't optional, you're wasting too much time without them. Now, to start with, skinning is highly dependent on DPS. The faster you kill stuff, the more skins you get. For those skinners struggling to gear up, this quest, Wrath of Alioth, just west of Heart of the Forest, allows you to use this bear vehicle, which two-shots the skinnable mobs in the quest area. Do what I'm doing here, exit the bear vehicle to skin, and then take on bear form again. The bear has a separate HP pool, so you can tank quite a lot of mobs. Now, as you kill mobs, the world quest bar begins to fill up, and when it completes, you don't have access to the vehicle anymore. But there's a simple exploit which gets around this. Form a group and convert it into a raid. This stops all quest progress. If you don't play with friends or have a second account, you can use the raid finder trick I'll show later in the video. Now, you'll find that you can stay in bear form indefinitely as kills no longer contribute towards quest progress. When you've geared up a bit, this becomes a less attractive option as you want to find somewhere with more mob density than this quest area but it is a great way to get skins for a fresh 60. You can use this raid conversion trick to extend any advantage you get from any world quest for skinning purposes. For example, this world quest, Terrors of Tiana Scythe, allows you access to a mushroom which boosts your primary stat by a massive 30%, significantly increasing the speed with which you can kill and then skin mobs. But again, consuming the mushroom contributes to world quest progress, and killing and skidding mobs also contributes to quest progress, so you'll need to retard quest progression, or you eventually won't have access to the features of the world quest. Now, what a lot of YouTubers do is focus on the faster hyperspawn farms around, such as this relatively well-known pool in Bastion, where etherworms spawn constantly no matter how fast you kill them. The problem with this type of farm is that while they are hypothetically very profitable, you tend to get a lot of competition, and the farms are also often nerfed. So now I'm going to show you the basic methodology behind finding your own farms, where you won't have to deal with either problem. Important warning here, I'm going to be using an exploit which may trigger a photosensitive epilepsy, so please stop watching now if you have that condition. Take this location at Ardenweald, coordinates 40.1, 41.6, where you can see a terror claw savage wing fighting with a pearl shell snapper turtle in the middle of this pool. Now, this is the sort of thing you want to be looking out for. Firstly, there's an event which is clearly meant to be viewed by players. So when Blizzard add an event like this, they want people to see it, so the mobs in question are not likely to have a terribly long respawn time. As you know, if you are sub to my Patreon, sometimes these events can be manipulated directly to produce hyperspawn farms. Second, there's a waterfall and a river here which form natural geographical boundaries, which tend to limit the area in which a given mob appropriate for the geography will appear. Bearing this in mind, amphibians in particular tend to produce the most quickly respawning and hyperspawning farms within such a limited area. The reason is that you can only really put amphibians like these pearl shell snapper turtles near a body of water. You can't put them in a meadow or on top of a mountain. It looks silly and it breaks you out of the immersion. So unless there's a really large body of water, you know that amphibians of a given type will spawn only within the quite limited area around the river or pool. 
Now, Blizzard don't generally want a situation where some quest mob gets depleted too fast and players are fighting over a small number of mobs. So they often make it so that if there are too few of a mob type, one or more spawns instantly so that people don't waste too much time and get frustrated. However, this situation can be exploited by gold farmers. So what Blizzard do, and this is where this gets quite interesting, is try to hide mobs in weird locations so their strategy isn't that obvious. You can see what they've done here. Mostly the turtles hyper spawn around the pool, kill one and another materializes. Now see that there are two turtles on the wall here? They're very easy to miss. Now I'm using an exploit to remove the water and other non-permanent features to locate the turtles, which unfortunately is far too useful uh, to someone like me with terrible eyesight to share publicly and risk getting it fixed, though it is on my Patreon. However, for non-patrons, there's a workaround where you can make a macro backslash tar pearl shell S, which will target any nearby turtle. The S for snapper is important, as there are level 1 pearl shell critters in this area, which you don't want to target. Now, when you've cleaned out all the turtles around the pool, jump down to the lower level. There are three different turtle spawn locations in this area. Now, if you can't find any more turtles on the island level or the lower level, it is probably because of this little bastard down here that spawns on the other side of the bridge in a deliberately awkward and unseeable location. To get to him, you may want to use a movement ability to save time. I'm using alter time here. Note that Blizzard very often puts some mob on the edge of a hyperspawn zone that's hidden behind something. If you're killing some mobs which hyperspawn and then suddenly don't, then look around. You can occasionally find a mob tucked away somewhere weird. Now, of course, you shouldn't be focusing exclusively on the hyperspawning turtles. There are actually a lot of skinnable mobs in this area other than the turtles. Uh, in particular, the stags are very important because they drop tenebrous ribs and those add significantly to your overall gold per hour. The vast majority of players who are farming solo need to take note of the fact that you shouldn't necessarily be going for the best hyperspawn farm as these farms are only often optimal for gold farming teams who benefit from manual or literal automation. The micromanagement you can do with a farm like this one makes it superior for a solo player and also means that their location is less likely to be overrun by moon kids who favour very simple repetitive rotations. Now, when I broke down the profits from this farm, I was looking at a profit of 22,500 gold per hour in materials, and most of this stuff sold within hours. This was about the same as the Bastion Etherworm farm I mentioned earlier. The slightly lower farming speed with the turtle farm is offset by the greater diversity of materials. This is from an hour's relatively casual farming. You should be able to do 25 to 30k per hour with a more suitable class for gold farming such as a monk. So this is a very effective basic option for someone who needs gold fast and doesn't want to do anything involving a group or anything complex or use any major exploits. Note these figures are a bit lower than ones you'll see other YouTubers give. And that's because in order to be competitive on YouTube, you generally have to use gold per hour numbers in video titles which push at the limits of what is possible. Fortunately, I'm in a position where I can afford to be a bit more realistic about gold per hour and use more practically attainable numbers, as I've already got a reasonably large following. Now, while the turtle farm is a decent farm, the point is not to go to that exact location and start farming. The point of this was to give you a reasonable idea about how to find four spawn farms, which are all over the Shadowlands, and what type of gold you'd make from doing that. It's worthwhile mentioning the Nature's Splendor Conduit option here, which you can get from the Ardenweald Covenant. This is a bag that awards around 150 to 200 golds worth of materials and drops randomly from mobs you kill. Now it is worth mentioning that Nature's Splendor has an internal cooldown of 30 minutes. 
Now, normally you'll get a bag within a few minutes of killing things and then nothing. In the general scheme of things, that is not a big deal. But there is a way to exploit this with an alt army. The internal cooldown is not shared across different characters. So in theory, you could create a number of alts with Nature Splendor and simply farm using each of them until you get a bag, thereby effectively bypassing the internal cooldown and dramatically increasing your earnings for short periods of time from skinning or indeed any other farming activity relative to the total number of alts that you have. Some YouTubers have suggested it is possible to farm skins in the other side dungeon with a tank. Using the following trick, it is actually possible with DPS also, though you'll need an eye level of at least 190. First, go to Legion Dalaran and find Archmage Tamir there. Select his Betrayer's Rise option Enter the LFR raid and well immediately teleport out. Now go to the other side dungeon and farm the stag mobs in the hidden glade there. I'm just going to show you the route from the entrance to the hidden glade. I'm speeding up the footage here. You'll need some method to drop combat at this point. These mobs have a much higher chance of dropping callous and heavy hide than open world mobs. They are harder to kill, so in order to be able to burst them down and complete the farm quickly, use the following technique. When you've killed all the stags in the glade, use teleport to dungeon to return to Gul'dan in the Betrayer's Rise. Attack Gul'dan and immediately drop combat. I'm using invisibility here and teleport out. Now this serves two functions. It returns you to the entrance of the instance without you having to run back, but it also resets the cooldowns on your time warp or other bloodlust based abilities, as well as other select class specific cooldowns. And you need the extra DPS from Lust when you're attacking elite mobs to do it efficiently. You can also use the same tricks with mobs in the open world. For example, the southwest corner of Ardenweald has a number of elite stag mobs which drop tenebrous whips as well as a high chance to drop callous and heavy hide. You will not stop the so there's the video. If you liked it, why not subscribe? And if you really liked it, why not consider joining my super secret Patreon feed where secrets too hot for YouTube get posted on a regular basis. Thanks for watching, this has been Archville.